by then, um, I was looking to do more Simpsons comics, and I was doing I was doing the Simpsons fairly regularly by that point. Like, how uh, did you how did you get involved with that? Like, you know, like how did you get involved with Bongo Comics, which is the company a girl that, a that's girl Matt who was Greening's a, company, right? The guy, yeah, that yeah. He Simpsons he got to keep the 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 print rights for the Simpsons. That was like part of his deal, so okay. he was able to still. He was able to print the comics and, you know, do his own cartoons, too. And so it was just something he loved to do. And he made a sick ton of money because okay. some of the licensing uh, Fox kept, but just for America. But like Graining got it. So like if you go to Canada you'll uh, at the time, I don't know if they have it now, but they would have like a Simpson store. It would have okay. all this other merchandise you wouldn't see in the States. So it would oh, have really? yeah, it would have T-shirts. And at the time they had this. Homer Simpson beer uh, bottle opener that would go, you know, you it would make a noise of the bottle opening in the, in the bottle opener, and then it would make it would have a line from Homer every time you opened a beer, and then you know just like all this other crazy merchandise that wasn't necessarily uh, you know sanctified in the U.S., but he could sell it overseas for some reason, oh, uh, and then the comics which were worldwide. Okay. I was told. Uh, by a, a, a fellow uh, who worked uh, in the comics industry that in Germany, uh, the Simpsons regularly sold $3 million an issue. Wow. And it was so crazy. Wow. They, would wow. buy, they would buy individual billboards just for an issue. So, really? Wow. Yeah, wow, really? It was nuts. So when the first time I got a cover, they like told me that because like at first I was like, oh, yeah, I'm on the cover. Cool. And they're like, no, no, you don't understand. Your story is going to be on the billboard in Germany. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, did anyone, right. did you ever, That's wild. Did you ever get a German to send you a picture of it so you could see no, it? Or? No, but I did get a friend of mine went to Germany and got one of my Bart Simpsons in German. Oh, so, that's cool. <laughs> so I got that. That's very back cool. There. So and, uh, very which, cool. Is so like was it was Bongo more like um, they pay you for the script basically? It's a work for hire mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Straight, and then did you just flat pay? But it was good pay. Like it was high end. Like, yeah. Like good. Like you were getting probably comparable top. to like a Marvel writer or something. Maybe. Oh, yeah. But I think, like, I think nice. we were getting paid more. I think oh, we were wow. actually paid more, at no least kidding. at the peak. They lowered it later, but it was right, but it was when pretty high. high end. Because, because, uh, was it like a like a submission thing that you did to get to become part of that, or was it um, a girl who uh, went to my high school? Who was in love with me uh, got me the gig. She was in love no with kidding. me back in high school, and okay. she ended up marrying a guy who they say is a, is the younger version of me, uh, who also <laughs> who also went to my high school, which was just <laughs> weird. Um, but uh, they're still married. Uh, hi, Karen. And uh, anyhow, Karen got me the job, and uh, you know I just started pitching, and uh, they liked my stuff, so I kept working. That's you awesome. You know it was crazy to work for them because it was the only place where you know, you'd get a note back that said CBF and it would stand for could be funnier. And you'd be like, oh, man. all right, I'll so be who, funnier. Was, were, was all the scripts gone over by Matt Greening himself or did he have people for that? Like, No, no, he had people for that. You know, okay. he had editors. I didn't know uh, how Matt, I, I don't think was. Matt was super involved in the day to day stuff. I gotcha. met him a couple of times when we were at shows. Um, he was always at the one show Bongo would always do is the San Diego show. Okay. So yep. a couple of times I went there and I got to meet him and uh, get to sign at their booth. Did you get to sign at their booth and everything? I signed at the booth a little bit, I think. Nice. And, uh, you know, it, it was great being part of that crew. It was yeah, a shame like when they closed down. I couldn't believe when they closed. I'm like, why do you close a comic book company that's making money? It's crazy. Yeah. Like, well, I could, you know, you know, you didn't hardly see the issues around here in the U S like I would see him from time to time, but not consistently. And like, even when I was working at the comic store, I don't think the comic store ordered any at all, which is shocking to me, you know, because yeah, it was still like the number one, you know, show on Fox at the time. And it was yeah. weird too, because like I, I go to shows and I always ask for Simpsons comics, trying to find my own so I could sign them or whatever. Yeah, so you could have like them, you know, for selling yeah. and stuff. And uh, like no one in the States would order them because I don't think a lot of store owners think that way. 
you know, they, they, they cater don't. a little bit too much to their clientele. It's very uh, tunnel vision. So it's just like, ah, it's, you know, I got to appeal to my crowd, which I understand to a certain degree. But if you want to get kids to come into your store, if you want to get like new customers, like general normies who are going to come in, you got to have something like the Simpsons. Yeah, and uh, that's why it was always selling in Germany and places like that, because places in Germany still sold comics and drugstores and places like that. The United States, obviously, that's really not a thing anymore, yeah. if it uh, ever was. Maybe did, a Walmart. Uh, right, right. <laughs> and now they don't even do them there. Did, uh, did When did Bongo like, close shop? Was it uh, about two or three years ago? I think it was right before the pandemic, I want to say. Okay. The cover wow, so that... they were making comics right up to then, huh? Uh, well, I was going to say, I, I, you know, I've been to started been going to San Diego since '09, okay. and I always recall Bongo having a really big presence on the floor, and you can almost kind of tell which comic companies had the most clout by the size of their booth, and then you'd see Bongo would always have a big booth, almost right across from Marvel. So oh, it was wow. just like, you know, what I mean, they were a really big deal. And, you know, some people overlook that. I was going to theorize that I, my guess is why Bongo probably just closed shop is probably because it, Matt Greening, I mean, what does he need it for? I mean, he's, dude's like, yeah. you sure. know. What, but, uh, did the was, Disney sale have anything to do with oh, it? Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I think I, that was probably it. I think, you know, they cut a deal. It was an all-encompassing thing. It all went to Disney. And then he was just out and yeah, got his probably money, I guess. Sense. I don't like, know. Yeah. And after doing it for so time. long, too, he might just be like, yeah, whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, he spent most of his time meeting with his lawyers, tracking down guys who were bootlegging Simpson stuff. I <laughs> oh, mean, really? that was like, yeah, that was like a huge thing. It was just, huh. they, they had like tons of this stuff they had to track down because in multiple countries, it wasn't even, it was like worldwide pirating of Simpson stuff. Oh, yeah. I, re I re do remember the bootleg Simpson shirts on the streets of Boston in the 90s. People would just go sit up in, you know, uh, the common and uh, they'd be selling Simpson shirts. And, you know, uh, Bart was a little orange instead of yellow. You know? Right. <laughs> well, I think, you, <laughs> Johnny, I, I think you could still go up to Hampton Beach and get a Bart Simpson pissing on a Ford logo right now. There you go. <laughs> <Same idea. laughs> Right? Don't have a cat, dude. Yeah. You know? Wait a minute. <laughs> right? I don't remember Bart saying that. Ahoy, Mickeys. Tis I, Captain Horatio Honeyflakes. And I be here to tell you about me newest crowdfunding campaign. The adventures continue with me crew, the Mighty Mascots, in issues 7, 8, and 9. Just focus your looking glass on the amazing artwork of Ian Warianto, and Anton Bondi, me crew, the mighty mascots, are up against some scurvy scallywags, and we need ye help to defeat them. There be a bounty of exclusive treasure only available here, where X marks the spot. I spy a huge coffer of bonuses and stretch goals on the horizon. then please consider pledging so we can continue these adventures with the weirdest crew I ever had the pleasure of sailing with. Mascots Unleashed!